Hey everybody. It's been almost six years since I've been covering ownership of the EV vehicles I've owned. First, it started with my 2018 Tesla Model 3 and now continues with my 2023 Fisker Ocean 1. I cover the highs and lows of ownership, which I think is important for people to understand. About a week ago, I noticed when I got into my Fisker Ocean that the center dash area was making some noise, like a clicking sound. So I was looking around the dash and I noticed that the vent to the right of the screen was stuck closed. So every day for a few days, it was making that sound when I got in the car. I looked at the other vents. The other vents are fine, uh, which reminds me of back when I got the car at the end of October. I heard that there were some issues with the original design of the vents for the HVAC. And what I've heard is that there was a new design and that that was going to be installed in those original production cars. I think the issue was up until November or so. I didn't have any issues over the last several months until just this past week. So I I thought I was uh, in the clear and had decent vents, but that's not the case. And I have heard that uh, other people are having this issue too. So I contacted the customer service on the app and I got a case number. And then about a couple hours later, I received a follow-up email confirming it. And last night, which was Saturday, I received a call from a Fisker service tech and he scheduled me for a installation today of the new vents. And he's going to be arriving in the next 15 minutes or so. So I'm just getting ready for that. And while he's here, he's going to be installing the version 2.0 software, which is uh, something I'm looking forward to. So let's get started. All right, I am now in my Fisker Ocean and I have completed my service appointment. Uh, the service tech, Gregory, arrived around 12.30 p.m. and he started working on the vehicle in my garage. Uh, he very much appreciated having an enclosed area like this since the last several days have been rainy and where he's been. And I must say, um, I'm pretty happy with the work he did. I definitely recommend uh, Gregory, if you see him, say hi to him. Uh, very helpful and knowledgeable service tech. The vent installation was the first thing that he did. And he started that probably around 1245. And that continued until about 3.30 p.m. So it is pretty involved. He has to remove all the components of the dashboard, including the steering wheel and the center display, and also lower parts of the dash too. Um, pretty much a, a lot of things that need to be disassembled and quite a few bolts uh, that need to be taken out. Luckily, he mentioned that there were only three sizes of bolts that they use, so it makes things easier to keep track of. I have some pictures here you can see. I'll show you. Unfortunately, he could not allow me to video him working on the car, and I totally respected that. He said I could take some uh, shots and video with him not in, in the... Uh, in the action so uh, I did take some of those and I'll show you uh, some of that additional video right now I must say uh, the vents that were removed he took out four vents and they are modules and he showed me on one of them the one that was defective on the right of the center screen he showed me the part and right here you can see it is this orange part in the center and he mentioned that it was a 3D printed part and that the new versions of the vents uh, have a cast plastic part now that uh, will not fail like this one did. Here, I'll give you that. My hands are in some of the TSPs, they know me well. 
But that's what actually happens. That little guy just falls. He uh, doesn't do his job well enough. And then all of a sudden you're left with non functional parts. And um, that's the one thing that he mentioned. And also, he had to take all four of the vents for the uh, process and send them back. So I couldn't keep one <laughs> to check out. But you can see in this uh, some shots here that uh, gives you a pretty clear idea of what the vent looked like. When he reinstalled the four new vents, there's also a module that connects all four of them to the system and he replaced that too. In fact, that's one of the major things for the replacement that he had to do. He was able to do all of this change on the dashboard assembly on the ground, turned over, and you can see what that looks like right here. So after he got those uh, modules reinstalled into the dashboard, he just had to reverse the process putting all the pieces back together again, moving the center console and all the trim pieces and the steering wheel and the dashboard sections back into place. It has to be done a certain way and also make sure all the connections are set and not to forget any of the bolts. And uh, we joked at the end that he had zero bolts left over, so that was always a good sign. So that, that was really good. Uh, I got a good idea of what needs to be done for this vent replacement. And it is, he mentioned quite a few cars are affected by this and the production, I think starting in the summer all the way through the fall. So all of those have to be done at a certain point because they will eventually fail. So if you don't have a problem with your vents at this point, don't worry about it. If they fail in the future, just contact customer service and they'll be able to order those vents and replace them. So after everything was put back together, he started doing the software update for 2.0, which includes a number of different things. This installation process, he used a laptop to do, which connected to the car two different ways, and they can connect it to the OBD port. Uh, they can also connect wirelessly and there's also a USB cable that I've showed in previous videos, the secret USB cable that's on the passenger side of the center console. He also had to connect a USB flash drive to that since the update is fairly large, uh, multiple gigabytes of data that had to be loaded into the car. The process when you do an over the air update for 2.0 is done in three different sections. So you'll have three different installations that you'll have to do. And one thing about having it done in person is he was able to update all of the modules and all of the software that needed to be updated was done in one try. A little complication by doing it in person is that he had to disconnect the 12 volt battery and also the emergency disconnect in the cargo area. He had to do this several times during the update process. It's slightly different when they install things using the laptop than doing over the air. He mentioned that uh, it does take a while to do and it took roughly, I would say he started around 3.30 with the software install and it took up until about after five, say 5.15. So it, it took almost two hours to get all of that done but it is all done now and I have the latest update. Uh, one thing I must mention is that the uh, doggy windows in the back had to be recalibrated since he had to disconnect the 12 volt battery lead a couple of times. So the final thing he did was to calibrate that and to get California mode working in the end that is all working perfectly too. So what I'll do is um, I'm going to cover the software update 2.0 in another video. So basically I just want to conclude that the service appointment I was very happy with. So far I've met two of the service techs and they've been excellent. They've answered my questions. They did not mind me hanging around and talking to them while they were working. Uh, they actually said it's it's actually nice because a lot of times they're just by themselves and 
it's nice to have somebody to talk to. My service tech was also from the Virginia area, so he had to travel down today to visit a few other people. That's about it. I, I must say I'm very happy with it. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.